Good morning, Merrimack Heights Church. Wanted to share just a few things before we get started today. We're so thankful that you're joining us. And for those that are joining us, just kind of moving forward, we wanted to let you know that we are now live streaming our entire service, just as we've been doing at 10 a.m., from our Merrimack Heights Church Facebook page. So that's going to be where it starts. You can search Merrimack Heights Church and just look for that red circle with the white MH. That's our logo. We would love for you to like that page if you're willing to do that and join us on that page as we put out some, we feel some great hopeful content in that. Here's another thing. There are sometimes people joining us online and uh, they're not in the social media world, but they don't want to be on Facebook. They don't want to be on Instagram. You can also go to Merrimack, Merrimack Heights dot free church online dot com merrimack heights dot free church online dot com and we're also live streaming from that platform today so if some of you wanted to jump in on that too and just see how that works and share that to individuals that might not want to be on social media or they just they don't they don't have a, a reason to do that so again a couple different ways you can join us we're thankful for all that the lord's going to do and we want to invite you to join us this morning as we sing this first song. It's called, I Give You Glory. And we want to lift up the name of the Lord together. Come on, sing out in your living room. Shout out in your living room. This is the day that the Lord has made. We're going to rejoice and be glad in it this morning. One, two.
He's done a lot in your life this morning, and we're so thankful that we can gather together in any way that we can and lift up the name of the Lord, raise our voices together, and we know that the Lord is going to touch us. Why do we know that? Because the Bible says where two or three are gathered together in the name of the Lord, He is in the midst of them, and I know that we have two or three this morning. Shout that out this morning. It's well. And it is well. Yes, it is, Lord. With my soul. And it is well. It is well with my soul. Come on, let's sing that again. Lift your voice.
God's with you through it all. And through it all, through it all, my eyes are on you. Through it all, through it all, it is well. He sees and knows it all. And through it all, through it all, my eyes are on you. And it is well. on, lift your hearts to the Lord. Lift your hands to the Lord. Can you just begin to pray as a family, even where you stand? All is well. Forgive us where we've misplaced that thought, Lord. We declare all is well. We just pray in your peace, Lord. We pray in your understanding, God, where we don't have it. We pray your insight, your mindset over our families, Lord. We pray that the joy of the Lord would be our strength today, Lord. That you would lift up our countenance, Lord. If, as scripture says, our countenance is downtrodden, Lord, if we've been looking at the ground too much, we lift our eyes up because your word says that our redemption draweth nigh. Thankful that we know you, Lord. For those that don't, I pray that they would cry out to you, Lord. Ask them, God, to forgive you of their sins, to come in to their life, Lord, to make you Lord, Savior, and King. It's the best decision I've made. I know that, Lord. Thank you that I found you, God. And what a friend I found. Closer than a brother. And I have felt your touch so many times, Jesus. More intimate than lovers. Can we sing his name? you this morning I don't know what you're feeling but I feel his anointing in this church today in this tabernacle today come on oh we sing Jesus there's power in the name of Jesus there's provision in the name of Sing that a verse again. What a hope. And what a hope I found. More faithful than a mother. It would break my heart to ever lose each other. meeting you in your living room. Jesus, Jehovah Jireh, your provider. Jehovah Rapha, your healer. Jesus, friend forever. Come on, shout his name.
think we've got one more in us this morning. Oh, oh, oh. Jesus. 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 Friend forever. again be reminded of his faithfulness what a hope I found more faithful than a mother it would break my heart to ever lose each other that you are ours and we are yours forever. God, nothing's going to change that. God, where can we go? Where can we go that you are not there? What can we walk through that you have not made a way in the desert, in the wilderness, God, through the sea, God? You are preparing the way, God, and we choose this morning to trust you. We choose, God, to dwell in your goodness. We choose, God, to rest in your faithfulness, God. We choose to stand on the truth of your word because it is and always will be the truth of your word that will set us free, God. And we choose as your children to live free this morning. We that are free, God, choose to be free indeed according to your word. And so we rest in your provision today. We rest in your goodness. We rest in your mercy, God. We declare the name of Jesus, the name that is above every name, that in that name every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Every sickness will bow, every adversity will bow, every fear will bow at the name of Jesus, at the name of Jesus, at the name of Jesus. Can you shout his name wherever you are? Shout his name. It is the name that is above every name. Jesus, he is enough. Shout Jesus over your fear this morning. Shout Jesus over your doubt this morning. Shout the name of Jesus over your worry right now in Jesus' name. Shout Jesus over your sickness. Shout Jesus over your kids and your family. Over the provision that you need even in this day. In this day, choose to believe that he is the God of today. That he is going to meet your need. That he will be faithful to you according to his word. Amen. Amen. Can you just praise him? Can you worship him? I know sometimes it might feel a little silly by yourself or, or in your living room, but let's just get used to it. Let's just get comfortable with it for right now because he's worthy no matter where we are. Can we praise him this morning? Can we thank him? God, we thank you. That you own a cattle on a thousand hills. We don't doubt that you're going to come through. We don't doubt that you're going to make a way where there seems to be no way. We worship you. Jesus, Your kids adore you today. Jesus, 
with Thank my you that friend, you're a friend forever. That will stick closer than a brother. Everybody say amen this morning. <laughs> Turn to your left and right. Maybe there's nobody there. That's okay. That's all right. You know what? I think today and every day after this that we would just choose to allow God to do it the way he wants to do it, to not worry about him coming through, to trust that his ways are higher, his thoughts are greater. So today we rest in that. Amen. We rest as his kids. We rest in the fact that he is that friend that sticks closer than a brother. We can smile this morning. We can smile, not because things may look great in the natural, because God is moving in the supernatural. And he will be faithful because he can be nothing less. Amen. He can be nothing less. So again, take just a moment to say good morning to whoever you want to say good morning to you. Pastor Brian and I, our family are saying good morning to you as we look at all your faces this morning. So thankful for you. Whether your picture is on a chair at MHC or we have connected through this lifetime that God has given us, we're so thankful to be a part of your lives. We're thankful for the opportunity to broadcast hope and to broadcast truth this morning because our God is worthy and he is faithful. Amen. Amen. If you're going to give online this morning, just go ahead and hold your phone in your hand. If you have a check ready to mail, just hold that in your hand this morning. Uh, maybe you don't have anything. Just lift your hands this morning and trust that he's faithful. Uh, we appreciate. We are so thankful for your thankfulness, <laughs> that your thankfulness and your um, faithfulness, there it is, uh, to this house, to God who, again, is making a way, who is providing. And so we want to pray over uh, the gifts that you're going to give, whatever that looks like. Just a reminder that you can give online at MerrimackKites.com, as well as you can send uh, in your gifts to P.O. Box 1205, that's Arnold, Missouri, 63010. And we stand together knowing that God is going to be faithful to his house and to his people. Amen. Uh, take just a moment and watch a, a beautiful couple in our church as they share, share just a little bit. Introduce ourselves? No. We're going to start in the, the, the quiet time. We'll be us looking, us laughing okay. before we start. And then, then it'll, it'll pick up and you can just look at the camera and right away say. After we laugh. Yeah, but now it's going to be fake. No, <laughs> Hi, I'm Scott. And I'm Michelle. And together, we're the Holmans. Hey, a few weeks ago, Sean Deal was at church preaching a message, and what he actually ended up preaching was uh, the topic of what's in your hand. And it really spoke to our heart, spoke to my heart, because quite frankly, when I start thinking of ministry and, and ideas of it, my mind gets out of control, and I start to think really big. Like we should adopt the baby, or... <laughs> Things that are just way too big for, for me to actually do something with in that moment, in that time. And so what it usually causes is me to not do anything. And so it really impacted me when I thought, you know, what is in my hands and what can I do with that right now? Right. So it was the weekend, or the weekend before Easter, late that weekend, my daughter and I were sitting on the front porch and our boys were in the woods working on their hiking trails and we were just kind of talking about the disappointment that we'd, we were feeling about Easter and not being with our family, not being able to have our annual Easter egg hunt and um, church and all those things that were disappointing us. And I remember it was just clear to me, it says, Michelle, use what you have in your hand. And Olivia said, Mom, I wish we could host Easter egg hunts. And I thought, why not? Let's do it. We have a few eggs. We have a, one bag of candy. Let's use our trail and put together a quarantine friendly, social distancing friendly Easter egg hunt for families. And so we put it out on Facebook and we had a great response. We, people that we know came, people that were complete strangers came, people that were close to came, and we had a blast. We just had a blast doing that. And I got 
feedback from several people that they had taken that idea and turned their own, their own spin on it and hosted their own Easter egg hunts, whether it was at their house or at their church, but kind of used that. And that was the, my favorite part of the whole weekend. And our family had such so much fun and, and it just really dropped, draw our dress together and gave us something to look forward to that every weekend since then we've done something a little different. Um, last weekend we hosted Sur Family Survivor and this weekend we were gonna do date, date hikes, but if the weather just um, didn't cooperate. But we have a few more things up our sleeves to use our hiking trails. Shh, we even had make out point all ready for our guest. <laughs> God rained us out. <laughs> Please don't put that in there. <laughs> so here's what's interesting is for years uh, we've, we've owned this property and I've always had the desire to uh, have trails out there just to walk, clear my mind and just enjoy uh, what God has given us in nature. And I really can never seem to get buy-in from the rest of the family, specifically the kids, to just help me out and, and to help me get the trails ready and to keep them at a place where they're usable. And what was so interesting to me is when this idea came about, and when we started uh, serving with what we had, it caused our children, our older two, our 16-year-old and 14-year-old, to basically take their eyes off the current situation. It's like it gave them purpose. Yeah. It gave them a, a world that's bigger than ourselves. And they joined in and worked very hard to serve all these other people. And it just really reiterated to me the importance of having purpose in our life and, and serving and, 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 and just being generous with what we have has really allowed us to, as you say, not only survive this time, but thrive through this time of COVID. Yeah, so you don't have to, to be leading a ministry. That's great if you are, or adopt a baby, or um, be feeding thousands of homeless people, but you can just be using what you have, what God has given you, whether that's a piece of property, mm -hmm. or whether that's a bunch of Easter eggs, or snacks that you put together for the lonely widow who lives on the street, or... Um, Maybe just a smile right. six feet away. That's right. <laughs>
in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. Do you live under that banner and under that mentality? Or is your thought or has your thought been more, what in the world? What is going on around me? Life seems so uncertain. And we talked about those two banners. And I'm reminded today as we continue in the series that I had to make choices this week. You had to make choices this week of what banner you decided to rally under, rally your family under, rally your thoughts under, rally your finances. What banner are you choosing to live by? I am learning that in living under one of these two banners, he's got the whole world in his hand or what in the world, I am reminded that during pandemic, this takes a ton of focus. This does not come for all of us naturally or it's not an easy process. It takes a lot of focus. It takes a daily calibration to his word. One of the things that I've heard as a pastor is that this time for many has brought them closer to the word of God. What a joy. What an awesome that of a win that is for God that we're thinking more about God's word. The other thing that it takes uh, in living under that banner, if he's got this whole world in his hand, is it takes prayer. It really does take effort on our part. I think you know this this morning. God doesn't snatch you up and put you under one of these two banners. He doesn't put you under the banner of what in the world? He doesn't put you under the banner of he's got the whole world in his hand. It is a choice that you make. And so oftentimes, and I don't say this in a, in a bad way, but in a challenging way, so oftentimes Christians want to live on all the work that Christ has done for them. And I love that. But I do want to remind you as you read the epistles and all throughout the New Testament, there is an energy on our part and an effort on our part. That is really why the epistles were written as a reminder to the churches. I want us to go to Colossians chapter 3, verse 2. And this is going to be a verse that helps us, I believe, calibrates us around making the right decision, getting under the right banner. If you look at the screen today or look in your Bible there at home, it says, set your mind, another translation says, Set your affections on things above, not on things of the earth. Read it with me this morning. Set your mind on things above, not on things of the earth. Sometimes it's very hard for us to set our affections on things above because it doesn't feel right now that we're attached to things above. It feels like we're attached to the here and now. But I want to remind you that when your affections, remember that translation that says, set your affections on things above. I want to remind you that when your affections are being affected, you have to make a choice. God won't make the choice for you. A praying parent can't make the choice for you. A better job can't make the choice for you. You have to make the choice to set your affections. God can help us and will help us, and he's given us his word to navigate through a season of what in the world, what in the world is going on. Let's think through this for a moment. When the sun is shining, who's thankful for a bright and shiny day? My youngest sister, Sarah, turned a new age on Friday. And, and I won't share what that is, but she turned a new age on Friday. And my sister Sarah, out of all people, loves the sunshine. I mean, she loves it. Why they don't live in the sunshine state, I'm not sure. I apologize, Mom. Um, she loves sunshine. I, I, she posted something not too long ago, and I let her know. I, call, uh, I said, you are my sunshine. She just loves it. And I think most of us do. But I want to ask you a question. As we keep our affection set on things above. How are you doing when the storms come? How are you doing when the rains come? How are you doing when the wind begins to, to flow and blow? I'm not talking about when the sun's shining. When you're in the light of the sun, most of us enjoy those types of days. But when the storm begins to blow in and when the wind begins to hit your life, Let me say it this way. When the wind begins to hit your 
work from home situation, when the wind begins to hit your job situation, when the wind begins to hit your finances, when the wind begins to hit hit your pantry, whatever this might look like, how are you living? Colossians 3, 2 tells us that we can set our affections on things above. We can stay locked into God. And I want to talk about that just for a few moments. It doesn't matter the category of the storm. This is category two, category four, category five. The reality is when I stay under the cover of God during epidemic, regionalized, or pandemic worldwide, I am under his cover. Is there anybody online today that is thankful that the one that is watching over you and protecting you is God himself? If you are a believer in the Lord, these days are no, they're not the easiest days, but these are the days that you can be reminded, you know what, Lord, every day of my life you have numbered and I stay covered under your plan. So when we see our affections getting affected, we have to run under that umbrella, under the protection of God. I want us to go to Philippians chapter 4 and In Philippians chapter 4, we're going to look at an amazing passage of Scripture. At some point, I'm going to preach a series on it called The Great Exhortation. Because Philippians chapter 4 is an exhortation to believers, those that know the Lord. We've been doing our best to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. You might be saying today, Brian, I don't know the Lord. Well, you know what? Today is your day of salvation. Why don't you stop doing what you're doing right now? Yes, stop watching this message. Walk away for 30 seconds and say, Lord, come into my life. Make me new. Change me, Lord. I've I've got sin issues. I've been separate from you. I've been trying to figure it out all these different ways. It doesn't matter if you're 70 or 80 or 60 or 16 or 30 or 24. It doesn't matter. Get things right with the Lord. We're talking here in, in Paul's writings to the church of Philippi, we're looking at his writings, and in Philippians chapter 4, he gives the great exhortation. And many of us will know Philippians 4.13, or I'm sorry, Philippians 4.3, we would 4.13 too, but Philippians 4.3, we know it really well, and I want us to look at it on the screen today. Philippians 4.3 says this, and I urge you also, true companion, Help these women who labored with me in the gospel with Clement also and the rest of the fellow workers, those whose name are in the book of life. I don't think that's the verse that I was looking for. Is that Philippians 4.3? Joy, can you check that for me? I might have been. I'm looking at the verse, and I probably said it wrong, but I'm looking at the verse that says, I might have got it wrong, it might be 3.4, but I'm looking at the verse that says, rejoice in the Lord always and again, I say rejoice. And you can, you can comment on that in the, in the verses and correct your pastor this morning, your pastor this morning, if I mess that up. But I want to look at Philippians 4.3. Did anybody here find that reference? Four, four. It's 4.4. Four. I'm sorry. Philippians 4.4 four is what I wanted to read today, that we are to rejoice in the Lord always and again. Somebody shout again. And again, I say rejoice. So Paul is not just reminding this church to rejoice once. He's saying, hey, I want to remind you again, again, I say to rejoice. We know that well. But I want to ask you this question. When the storm has been blowing against us over the last six weeks, have you been practicing that verse? Philippians 4, 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Don't get under the umbrella of God and then step out of the umbrella of God. No, no, you don't need, most are not walking around with an umbrella when the sun is shining, on the beach maybe, but the reality is when the sun is shining in the spirit, you need the umbrella of God. When the rain is happening in the spirit, you need the umbrella of God. There's never a time that we walk outside of his umbrella, especially in moments in our life where we are making statements like this, what in the world? What in the world is going on around us? Because scripture begins to give us a peek into some of the things that we're walking through. Philippians 4.4, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. I sure hope I got the rest of these verses right. It'll help me preach it better this morning. Turn to Philippians chapter 4, verse 5. If we could bring that scripture up 
on the screen. Uh, I think I could do better with this one. It says, let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Now, when we look at this particular verse, I love this right here because it says that I can have a guard around my mind and my heart through Christ Jesus, which is lodged in peace. But I want to tell you what, if you want that peace, you've got to go through the aforementioned verses of Philippians 1 through 6 and read through what that says. Colossians 3 attaches to that too. Set your affections on things above. I'm really saddened sometimes because I think so many people, even in the body of Christ, set their affections on the wrong thing. And I'm not talking about hiding from something that's not real. That's not what I'm talking about. But I will tell you this. If your intake is everything that the media streams are showing us, you're not going to have peace with God. If you have not set your mind and affection on the right thing on an ongoing basis, and for most of us, I know for me, it's daily. I've got to get up. If the first thing you go to in the morning is your Facebook and Instagram and the morning news, you're in trouble. Let me just say it that way. David said early in the morning, will I rise up and seek you? Let me preach to you this morning, not just teach a good message. Some believers today with your cup of coffee would be better joining God in his word in the waking up in the morning than running to all of these outlets that are piping in sometimes 10 different stories in 10 different ways. And sometimes it's to gain possibly their own agenda or their own framework. You know what? When I take all of what 20 people say, 20 news channels, this, that, and the other, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, whatever that might look like. And I say, you know what, Lord, let me just, let me push all that away right now and and let me get under the word of God. I'm going to tell you right now, those are the people that you need to be gaining strength from. Yes, we gain strength from God, but Paul also said, follow me as I follow Christ. So let me tell you a rule in my own life. God's word is the standard in my life Not even all the other things that I see from Christian people that are making posts today. Stay under the umbrella of God in a what in the world season. And I believe that you'll be okay with him. It doesn't mean you won't go through things, but he will sustain you and he will help you. So if I want the peace of God to to set a guard around my heart and my mind, then I really have to begin to do what scripture is saying. You know what it, you know what it means? It means I can't just read it. I've got to practice it. Some of you men and women can go back to high school sports where you got some type of playbook and you'd have to go through basketball players, maybe volleyball, how we line up. It wasn't enough just to just look at it. The coach would make you come and practice. When you busted the play up, he'd say, okay, get on the line and run. Why? Because he was creating discipline in you because when we engage in the battle or the game, we need to know the stuff. Here's the reality. When life hits, if we have not built ourselves up in the word of the Lord, we're lost during troubled times. Now, that doesn't mean you have to go get a college degree in Bible during times like this. It means this. Daily, you have to say, Holy Spirit, be my teacher I haven't been living under the sacred text. I've let a lot of things from the outside control my thoughts. My mind is not at peace. My heart is broken, and I need your help. I want to tell you, you just enrolled in God's school. It is not an easy school all the time, but it's a better school than the other alternative, which is the enemy's camp, the enemy's school. And when you will enroll in God's school, though there will be times it will be hard because you won't get to do what everybody else is doing. You won't get to fill people's minds with fear. You won't get to post things without doing some research on it to put out information that could cause people to move into panic. When you are a believer in Christ, you represent to the best of your ability the truth of God's word. And who knows, God's word will sustain us. Can somebody shout amen in the comments today? It will sustain us. Let's look at Philippians 4 verse 8. Philippians 4, verse 8 says, finally, brethren, whatever. Can somebody just say whatever today? We're in a what in the world series, 
and in this What in the World series, uh, Paul gives us this list of things. First of all, he gives us a couple things that we can do to practice and to set a, a, a peace in our heart and in our mind. And then Paul breaks down these, these scenarios for us. And I love it because it's like Paul's wrapping up some thoughts. He's like, finally. Some of you are like, Pastor, I like when you get to that point in your message, the finally part. That when you say you're landing the plane, I love it because I know that lunch is on the way. Well, I want to tell you the word of God will not hurt you, and I'm trying to keep it short today. Paul says, finally, brethren. And Paul, you know that whole whatever? Who's ever had somebody tell you whatever? Paul was one of the first to coin the word. So right here it is. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true. And I want to just keep that scripture verse up for a while. Have you been living a Philippians 4, 8 life believer? Have you been living under a whatever things are true? Not whatever things people post. Whatever things are true. Living under the cover of God. Because when I'm living under the cover of God, I, I, can, I can see and I can experience the fact that even when people do these types of things, I could say, well, Lord, that's not your word. God, that's not your word. God, that's not your word. Are you living under the umbrella in a what in the world time under the umbrella of his cover that says whatsoever things are true? Are you living out truth? Living out truth is what you are talking about true. That's the great thing about talking about the word of God, which will sustain through ever when you post about it, when you talk about it, when you comment on it, you are talking about truth. It says whatsoever things are true, Whatsoever things are noble. Let me just ask you. Um, we know the theme of our world right now. There are actually some interesting things that have been taking place all around our world that we have not seen the coverage on because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Now watch this. But whatsoever things are noble, are you focused on noble things? Is your mind bombarded from all of this other jargon? Or am I saying, you know, Lord whatsoever things are noble, I want to go ahead and put some effort towards getting my life in that zone. Again, this takes focus. This takes prayer. This takes running to the word of God, even for the seasoned saint. That's one of the things I appreciate about those who have been in the faith for decades. You, you don't look at them trying to get by on a crumb from Sunday's message. They are daily in the word of God. In a what in the world world, are you going to live by? He's got the whole world in his hands. So whatsoever, finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, here's the next one, whatever things are just. Are you thankful that we serve a God that is just? We, we like fairness. That's not fair. I remember saying that a ton when I was a kid. Somebody would get a gift or, or mom and dad might be out with maybe one of my sibling sisters, and they come in from a, a, a place, and they're holding an ice cream, and I'm not. And I'm like, well, did I, did I get one? And I'm like, no, we just wanted to take her out and bless her today. Well, that's not fair. C can I tell you, let's not, let's not get so focused on the fairness of God. Let's just focus on the reality that he's just. Some of you are walking through something right now and you're like, you know, and, and it's beyond, some of it's beyond the COVID-19 pandemic. You're like, why do I always do something right? And it seems like I even know some believers that don't get it all right, right? We want to go to the law with them. Why do I seem to be suffering? Why do I seem to be struggling? Can we go back to the scripture? Whatsoever things are just. Lord, when rain is coming upon me and the wind is blowing against me and I have fears and I have insecurities, I am going to gather under the protection of God. It doesn't mean it always warms my life immediately. But what I do know is I can say, you know what, Lord? I remember your word in Philippians 4. You are a just God. And I fully trust you with my life. And what I'm walking through, no matter how painful, no matter how hard it may be, I trust you, Lord, and I want that to be a testimony of my life. So finally, brethren, the whatever statements of Paul and, and Paul's exhortation 
to the church in Philippians. Whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure. I love it because I think it's Matthew 5, 8, although I am getting the text mixed up a little bit today. I think it'll say something like this. Blessed or blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. If I attach that to Philippians 4, 8, I need to be thinking on whatever things are pure. Pure. Just purity in our lives to look at our lives and to say, God, you have a master plan in all of this. And Lord, I don't want the tainted view and the impurities of the world. And, and let me say this, just because somebody's not a believer in Christ doesn't, be, doesn't mean that they don't have truth. That's not what I'm saying. Because truth is some of the things that we talked about. Truth is we've been living in pandemic. And that just means that, a, that an outbreak was not regionalized. It was opened up to more continents and more places. That is the truth. I talked about it last week. If your kid has a broken arm, you don't act like your kid doesn't have a broken arm. We move into this, well, don't confess it. If you confess it, it'll happen. Sometimes we're walking through some things. If, if your job situation looks different, you don't confess. Well, I, here's what you confess. Lord, I thank you that you are helping me in leaner times. I thank you, God, that you are walking with me and you will not fail me. We start confessing his word and the reality of our lives. Jesus walked up to so many situations. He didn't tell the per person that was sick they weren't sick. He said, being under your faith, you're healed. So faith is needed in pandemic. Faith is needed to say, Lord, this is our current reality, but God, who's thankful for that this morning that he's with us. So I've got to practice these things, whatever, what, whatever things are pure. It's another whatever of Paul. Let's go on to the next screen there. Whatever things are lovely. Some of us have commented on the moments that we might not have had over the last six weeks. M most of us wouldn't with our family. I don't know if it always looks lovely at your home. I don't know if that's the word that you would recommend. I posted this the other day. I don't think she'll mind sharing, but Joy walked in the kitchen and she said, okay, here's the deal. If people do not start washing their bowls and putting them away, I am going to stop cooking. I will tell you the last two days, our kitchen has been much more clean. Why? Because mom was tired of dishes piling up and her doing the work, right? When we begin to do the work of scripture, when we begin to focus on lovely things, we planted some flowers out in front of our house and the rain came and I mean, it filled some pots and they were crooked and leaning over and pulled up on the porch this morning. They don't look very lovely, but give it a few days uh, let photosynthesis and sunshine and the soil kick back in. They're going to be okay. Sometimes even in moments where it feels like our life is wilting, we focus on the lovely thing of the Lord. We focus on the fact that he is there to never leave us, never forsake us in any time in our life. It's the whatever statements of Paul. Whatsoever things are of good report. Have you been following good reports? Or is your life bombarded and you're using all these excuses on why you're in the place that you're in? Um, I was talking to my family not too long ago. We can think ourselves sick. Any of us can. You start, well, this is happening, this is happening. We can think ourselves into moments where we start carrying out those patterns. If you tell yourself you're sick every other minute of the day or every other hour, don't find it weird that your body's not feeling good on Wednesday. Now, if you're really sick and going through something, you need to get help. I understand that. But we could apply this to any situation in our life. We've got to speak the truth of the word of God. Whatsoever things are of good report. Now, when you're looking at the report, the physical report in your life right now, um, I know that we're in a kind of a different situation because we have a senior this year and life has looked a whole lot different for our daughter than it has uh, for our other daughter that has graduated and, and many graduations that we've went through and they're remedying that and figuring that out. But there was a glimmer of hope when a, a sign was posted in the yard from the school district, senior 2020, and, and it was awesome. It had like the COVID-19 on it. And, and we were like, hey, that's a, that's a glimmer of sunshine in the day. It's a good report. It's saying, hey, here's some things we're not able to do, but these are some things that we can do right now. And I want to remind you, when you look at your report, that report might be a, a bank statement. I want to remind you that all, although in the natural, you are seeing numbers spit back at you that is a reality, it might be dwindling numbers for some of you. I posted the other day what we, what we are saving in gas, we are eating in snacks. 
So your food budget might be higher, and that might be the, the reality of the report. But I want to tell you, if you believe the report of the Lord, and if you trust him, and if you make adjustments where adjustments need to be made, and if you're not just eating when you're bored or eating all day long, and you, you kind of ration what you get in groceries and take some time with it, and you believe the report of the Lord, I could tell you this much. If he takes care of the sparrow and he takes care of the flower and the lily of the field, I promise you, my friend, he is going to take care of you. He's going to walk with you. So we've got whatsoever things are of good report. If there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, worthy, watch this. Meditate on these things. Can I say it modern day? Think on this stuff. Think on the six things that we just listed. Think of... Paul's finally moment where he is breaking this down to us that we are to focus on things of truth. We are to focus on things that are honest and just and pure and lovely and of good report. Let me read to you uh, as we're wrapping things up Philippians 4. Oh, Philippians 4.8. There it is right there. Let's go back to it. Philippians 4.8. And, and I'm going to close here this morning. Whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. I want to ask you today, what are you meditating on? What is the thing that you are meditating on? It is very easy, and I want to, I want to make sure that I get this point across this morning. It is very easy for us to come in this morning into our living rooms and a few that are here at church Listen to this stuff and say, I'm holding the umbrella of God. I am undercover. But it is very easy for real life situations to hit where we're not together and not in our living rooms and maybe even separate. And we're like, you know what, Lord? I'm just not feeling it right now. Life is bigger than what you're feeling right now. Life is his word. And for the believer, that is everything. We don't think of these thoughts. Paul is not saying, hey, kind of think of this stuff, and hey, it's a good thing on Sunday, but then walk away from it when you need it. No, it's like the coach saying, okay, we studied it, we amend it, we commented on it, we put a Psalm 91 little sticker on our door, we got the bumper sticker and the t-shirt, now we have to practice it and run the playbook. And I think that's the important thing that we have to focus on in a what-in-the-world situation. I've got to keep my mind and heart. Get this this morning. I've got to keep my mind and heart under the umbrella and protection of God. Philippians chapter 4. It gives you the framework. If I'm not focused on a good report, I'm not covered. If I'm allowing impurity and all these things, this, that, and the other... If I, if I put more truth and stock in what I hear out there instead of what I hear, then I'm not living covered. So I have to make a choice. This is just a very simple model. The picture in the Bible is he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide, check this out church, under the shadow of the Almighty. Did you know the shadow of the Almighty is the protection of God? What shadow has ever protected you? When you're scared, you don't go try to hide behind or get around your shadow. You try to get out behind a rock or in the lowest level of your basement. When you're not looking for a shadow. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under, watch this, Scripture, the cover of God. He will cover you. He will be with you. In a what-in-the-world reality, in a what-in-the-world statement world that we're living in, he will cover you and he will protect you and I am good in him. This doesn't only mean that the believer will not go through things, but this is the maturity of the believer. The maturity of the believer is how long do you stay under the umbrella of God? Not it sounded good Sunday, but I don't know. Not pastor it sounded good when you were talking about it, when we were live streaming, but right now I don't know. No, a mature believer is living under the protection of God. When the flood comes, I'm under his protection. When sickness comes, I'm under his protection. When financial adversity comes, I'm under his protection. 
I'm not making decisions out of fear. I am making decisions out of faith. Why? Because I'm under his protection. I'm not going to do stupid stuff. I'm going to run to the word of God, and he's going to give me revelation and show me what to do. So as we're ending today, I want to remind you that you are called to live under the protection of God today. I want to remind you of Philippians 4, Paul's exhortation to the church. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. I want to remind you that in a what in the world moment, we have to decide what in the world we're going to do with this message today. And I want to pray over you today as we think on the writings of Paul, as we think over this worship service. Thank you so much for all you've done to be a part of it. Thank you for your generous hearts in giving to the Lord today. Let me pray over you and bless you today. Father, thank you that this is the day that the Lord has made. We rejoice in you today. We rejoice in you. We rejoice in you, the Lord. We don't rejoice because there's pandemic. No, we rejoice in the Lord. We don't rejoice because our finances might look different. No, we rejoice in the Lord. We, we put the theme on where the theme needs to be. We rejoice in the Lord. No matter what happens between now and next Sunday, we rejoice in the Lord. I speak blessing and life and hope over everyone who's watching today. I pray for those that do not know you. I pray that they would come to you right now. I pray that they would ask you to come into their life. Forgive them of their sins. And to be, God, for you to be their Lord and for you to be their Christ. I pray today that those that need to make that decision would make that decision. And I ask in Jesus' name as we sang earlier today, Lord, that it could be well with all of our souls and we could live under your protection until you come back for us. I ask for these things in Jesus' name. And everyone said... Amen. Hey, listen, this morning, if you prayed that prayer and you've never prayed that prayer, can you just private message us on the MH page or Mind and Joy's personal page? We'd like to send you some things or possibly call you or email you things that would be helpful. Thank you so much for joining us today. Have an amazing week, Merrimack Heights Church.